Hello my friends of Hatari Labs, welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is about the dynamic flood simulation of combined peak flows with heck rack. Um, okay, let me explain you what is about this tutorial. Here we have um, the simulation. I mean, we are going to recreate the simulation. But this simulation is about two flows. Yeah, this is a main river, then this is an affluent. And okay, the two flows actually are have two peak. There is a peak on peak flows. I mean, from one from the main river, and the second river has a delay on the peak flow. So actually, we will have the flooding from the first river, and then the flood, and then afterwards it will be joined by the flooding from the affluent. So here we see, and this is, okay, here you will see, okay, okay, this is the flooding from the first, and then comes the flooding from the second one here, and then this is afterwards when the flooding is, has already occurred. Okay, so we are going to create this, this tutorial from zero. In the description of this video, you will have, okay, I will close this, and I will close this as well. Okay, on the description of this video, you will have uh, the digital elevation model. You will have some tabular data for the flow, for the uh, flow register. Okay, and as well as shape pipe. Okay, so let's start with this. On hero model, I will delete my model because I will create a new one and for this I will open the HECRAS 2.5 in order to create that terrain you need to have a new project already established so let's see here on model I will create dynamic block dynamic slot okay great and it will be on the um, um, international system of uh, means meters okay then we go to global mapper and here on global mapper we have terrain okay and then we create a new raster terrain okay uh, I will let that the raster apply the system of reference so here I press no yeah and here I say plus I strongly recommend that you put this on documents. So here it will be. And they say, okay, so the raster file has a system of reference. So do you, would you like to apply this? Yes. And then create. And then it appears something like this. And here you have the digital elevation model or the terrain. Okay. We will, I will upload another, another, a spatial file, but th in this case will be a vector file, new raster, new existing layer. So I, we, I go here, I go here and add existing layer. And this on here you have a shape file, and this will be the model limit. Yeah, because actually you don't, um, the the grid won't be created in the whole extension, but just on this extension. On this extension, it's, it doesn't seem so pretty. So I so I come here and I change the color here. To maybe this. Okay. Okay, so here you can see. Okay, so, so far, save, to save the terrain, and exit. Okay, here we go to geometric data, then we expand this, and then we create a, okay, here you see the terrain, but actually you don't see the extension of the model, because if you press here, you can, you can upload, or like you can represent the model limit, Okay, that's great. And here you have the 2D flow area where 
we are going to set up a float, a float, flat, flat area. Okay, that's great. So, takes a little while. Okay, great. And then say, okay, this will be flat. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I have to do it again. I I got much. Uh, um, okay, and I do this again because my mistake. I didn't press the right button. Okay, here, okay, slowly, I say that this will be flood area, and then say, okay, that's it. Okay, then we are going to set two boundary conditions. The first boundary condition will be here, and this will be outlet. Outlet. And then... Here we have a small river. A small river. Uh, please remember that it has to be a little bit outside. I mean, the line cannot be in the in the area, but it has to be outside the area. Otherwise, it, it sends you a message that the line is actually in the area and it cannot work. So here, as well here. It has to be parallel and a little bit of that. This is the big river. Okay, great. Okay, then we we select the area. We go to edit to the flow area. Uh, we create the computational points, and our width will be four meter, four meters. Uh, this will be the dimension of the grid, and then we force mesh computation, and the manning is 0 0.06. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And it has already it has already uh, identified that there is three boundary three boundary condition automatically. This has done without us doing any any fancy stuff. Okay, so it has all, because actually it like creates some snap here and identifies that this this boundary condition is related to this area. Okay, that's it. We save our geometry. And it will be geom. Okay, and then we close it. Okay, so we have already the geom. Then we define on edit the unsteady flow data, and for the outlet we create a normal depth. So this means this is the the the, the slope at the this is the slope of the of the energy line that is similar to the slope of surface. So it will be 0 0.02. And on the small river, we create a flow hydrograph, and based here on the description on the on the folder that will you will get a description of this video. You will have river flows, and here on river flows, you have this is for the big river, main river, ah, oh, big river. This will be for the small river. Small 
arriba. Mm -hmm. Safe. Okay, so here you have the records every hour for the simulation. And the, um, the flooding event starts at 15 hours of the 1st of September. Yeah, for the main river, but for the second river, for the small river, it it starts at two at one a.m. from the second of September. Okay, so actually, how many hours are from delay? Are uh, eleven hours. Okay, that could happen if you have like, I mean, if the reaches are not the same, something like that. Okay, so okay, so what what I do? I am where I'm, I am on the small river, so I actually create select this whole control C, and then I press here, so and then I just press control V, yeah. Otherwise, I cannot paste the whole. So and here, if you plot the data, this is the flooding event, okay, and then. Here I can put I have to put as well the energy line slope. Yep, okay. And this starts from the first September two thousand eight. Yeah, so and actually is yeah from the first September two thousand eight. Otherwise if you put zero eight it will recognize as 1988, 1908. So uh, you have to put 2008. Okay. Cloud data. Okay. So. Okay. Just check this and check this as well. Okay. And the big river, you as well, you have flow hydrograph. And on the flow hydrograph, you as well put 0.02. And here you copy all of this. Control C, you select here, ah, and here as well you put 0, no, 0, 1, September 2008, and here you press this one, and then you plot the data, and this is the peak flow. Okay, so you have both, and then you have the normal depth here, what else you need, you need to save your and steady flow data. This is flow data. Okay, great. And then we can run this, and then we will run by running an steady flow analysis. We create a plan that is going to plan plan one that it will we have to pre-process the geometry and the steady flow simulation. And here, uh, here on the Excel file, actually, um, I don't want to see the whole. I don't want to see the whole extension of the records. I just want to see from the first of September at 10 a.m. to the third of September at 16 hours. So here on my graph and say for first September two thousand eight ten AM to the third September two thousand eight to sixteen hours, I guess. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And the computation interval, it will be one minute, yeah? And this is, I mean, I have said that, I mean, if you run this with 10 minutes or maybe 30 minutes or so, the results are different. And this is, I think it's related to the number of grants, okay? Uh, um, I strongly recommend that you deal with this time discretization. It doesn't matter that it will take longer, okay? And on the mapping interval, you on the mapping interval I will put 
20 minutes because I want to see like with better discretization the outputs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as well here. Okay, I said this to compute. Okay, and then say, okay, cool. You have done everything, but you haven't created the flood area. So I I save my plan. I have already saved my plan, and then I go back to and stay to the geometric data, and I say, what? Why is having? So, but I have done it. Okay, so I, as well, generate again the computation plan, and then I force the mesh computation, say, okay, I save it. I, I save my project, and then I run the anesthesia flow analysis compute. Okay. So actually haven't done anything anything uh, fancy, but uh, somehow I haven't saved the project. That's why I haven't the project didn't realize that there was a a flood a mesh hit there. Okay. Don't don't panic. Um, this can take like ten minutes, maybe twenty minutes. I don't want you to wait for the end of the results, so I will stop the the video here. Remember that we are Hatari Labs. Hatari Labs is a well, we are a consulting company, but as well we have a blog where, where we promote the use of open source software for many numerical models, for many uses on water resources. Okay, so you can follow us by Twitter, by Facebook, by this YouTube channel, and if you go to our website, so Hatari, so you go to Hatari Labs dot com. Yeah, you can do, you can see our consulting products and as well as our blog. And in our blog, we have many online courses that you can as well can take. And then you there is more tutorials and our newsletter. Okay, so and then you can follow us by by Facebook. Okay, so I will stop this and see you in the coming. Oh, oh okay. No, wait, 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 wait. I think. We can. Ah, okay. No, it is already close to the end, so I won't stop this. Okay, so I close this. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so on here on Global Mapper, yeah, I go to results, I go to plan one, I have here, I can put the depth, the depth, yeah, and then here I have to select this. And if I select it, this is, do you see? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. again. First come the inundation from this river. Yeah, no, no, sorry, sorry. What time is the inundation from the first river? Is at 
let's see if it's 17 hours. So at 17 hours, okay, this is in the inundation from the river, yeah, from the river one, okay, so it's already, so this is the flood, and what time it starts the second flood event at the 2nd of September at 1 a.m. So the second of, okay, so this is not already the peak from the first, from the flood on the first river, but it, it will come the inundation from the second river. So let's see, now you will see the inundation from the second river. Look, do you see this? And then do you see that as well as the impact, the impact here, so there is a complete flooding, yeah, mm -hmm. and then we see something, uh, what is the peak of flows, I will be um, here at 15 hours of the 2nd of September. So, 15 hours, this will be the peak. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's well delineated. Yep. Uh, the extension of our model is actually enough to represent the flood. That's something interesting. Mm -hmm. We can represent as well the velocity arrows. Mm -hmm. And then we see the main the main flow directions here, no? Okay, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then you see that most water goes through the channel to these channels, mm -hmm. and there is some water that is going here in this direction. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, uh, since the this is since the extension of the the river of the boundary condition is just in this direction, this water has to go here to find the direction okay well so far that comes with the with the analysis of the flood event okay so great to have you on this tutorial uh, my name is Paul Matoria from Hatari Labs please have a great day and don't forget to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and to give it a like to this video uh, something else um, all the, as I have said, all the description of the, all the files to, for this tutorial will be on the description of this video. Okay, see you in coming tutorials and have a great day.